Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Here we have an episode of a band that uh, I'm guessing there's going to be a good chunk of you out there who have never heard this band before. Probably a lot of you have actually heard the name because they were actually a name uh, that was thrown out quite a bit like in the late 60s, early 70s uh, as they debut, debuted right around the same time as Black Sabbath did in the UK, right? And also were a band that had a lot of kind of occult images at the time. So Black Sabbath, Black Widow, you know, one of the two kind of evil sounding bands that emerged uh, from the scene there in Great Britain uh, right around the 1969-1970 time frame. Okay, but as history shows it, they were a band that other than, you know, some lyrical content on mostly their first album, didn't really back it up with that heaviness and doominess like their counterparts Black Sabbath did. So... Uh, you know, like I said, name got tossed around a lot back in the day comparing themselves to Black Sabbath. But when you get right down to it, music, not all that similar at all. All right. At uh, basically at their core, for me anyway, when I listen to Black Widow, they sound more like, uh, you know, they've got a heavy Hatman organ presence, bluesy guitar work, lots of flute and a bit of sax. So it's kind of like this. Deep Purple meets Jethro Tull meets like Steppenwolf type of sound. A little bit of psychedelia here and there. The first album is uh, pretty unique because it's got like some overt uh, sexual, sexual, satanic uh, lyricism. Okay. Maybe a little bit uh, over the top for some, but the music is actually pretty good. Subsequent albums, they've only, they've only have uh, really f uh, five studio releases of all new material they've got other live and uh you know rarities from the vaults and the things like that they've got like maybe around like eight eight or nine uh releases in total but of actual all new material they've got uh just the five albums right and uh one in more recent years the others were from the uh early 70s right so i'm gonna rank them as i like them okay again not talking about a lot of stuff here but uh i think a pretty unique band that will appeal to a lot of people who watch this channel if you've never heard them before. Because I think uh, especially their three, <clears throat> the second, third, and fourth albums are pretty interesting releases. Uh, again, none of these albums, I would say, are you know, going to knock you on your seat of your pants. Oh my God, this is the greatest band ever. But a pretty unique band if you love kind of the, the early 70s underground, you know, kind of hard rock rarities type of thing, right? Okay, a little bit of prog here and there as well. So uh, coming in at number five for me is going to be the most recent studio album they've done from 2011. It's uh, Sleeping With Demons. Pretty ridiculous album cover. Uh, quite frankly, uh, this album is pretty much a mess. So this is, you know, the band, which basically at this point in time, it's just basically uh, Clive Jones. Okay, one of the founders of the band uh, with a whole cast of characters. All right, Clive Jones, of course, is their uh, sax and flute player. He does some keyboards. Okay, sings uh, majority of the tunes. Also part of the band at this time is Jeff Griffin, Griffith on uh, vocals, bass, and guitars, keyboards. All right, and like I said, a whole cast of characters. They also have Tony Martin, ex of Black Sabbath, singing on the... Uh, the first track on here, Hail Satan. So my problem with this album, again, it's a more modern album. I think the band trying to sound like a heavy rock or metal band at times, but man, they just so they go so over the top with the lyrical content to the point, you know, I mean, they get, they basically walked away from the occult and satanic imagery after their first album back in, uh, you know, what was that, 1970. So the fact that they kind of just to kind of grab you know, some fans back and gain some attention. They went right back to that, you know, all these years later. Kind of a stretch. And I find a lot of the lyrical content on this album pretty ridiculous. Are there some cool riffs and some fun songs on here? Yes, there are. Okay. Uh, the Portal to Hell is pretty cool. Uh, Sleeping with Demons is actually a fun song. Okay. Radio Hades. Uh, that's When Evil Touch Me. You know, some, the, to the tunes are rocking, but... It just, it seems a little cheesy and over the top. And I think that just, um, I think this would have been, would have been better without all the kind of ridiculous satanic imagery that they tried to pump back into the music when it didn't really need to. All right. So, uh, and you know, like I said, I think this, that album kind of sank without a trace. So did it work? Probably not. All right. All right. So I'm going to go at number four, I'm going to go with their fourth album. Okay. Which is Black Widow 4, which was actually recorded in oh, what year was that 1972 
all right, but never officially released till 1997. This for me is kind of like their their prog album, all right. You, you know they got uh, all sorts of different people. So on this album you got Clive Jones, okay, and Jeff Jeff Griffith, okay. So those are the two two of the founders who were still trying to keep the band going. Uh, you got Kip Trevor on vocals. You've also got uh, Rick E on vocals. You got John Cully on lead guitar and vocals, okay. Cully appeared on a bunch of the early albums. Uh, Romeo Challenger on drums and uh, Zoot Taylor on organ. Okay, very good organ player, by the way. <clears throat> so this album's got uh, nine tracks. Some of the vocals are kind of John Anderson-like, a little bit of yes, okay. Some of the musical passages, you know, with the organs and the guitars and the flutes, kind of proggy and that kind of, like I said, Deep Purple, Jethro Tull, yes sort of way. All right, some hard rockers on here as well. It's decent, okay? It's not great. All right, I find the songs here not quite so memorable, but... There are some good passages. There are some good tracks on here. Uh, you know, Slay Ride is the opening, like, nine-plus-minute track. That's a pretty good tune. Uh, what are some of the other notable ones? Um, <clears throat> the Waves is a pretty cool tune. When Will You Know? Floating is actually pretty nice. Good album. Okay, not great. Next up, I'm going to go with their third album, Black Widow 3. Okay, this came out in 1972. It's a pretty good album. Again, maybe not as as rocking as the uh, the album that came before it, not as proggy as the album that came after it. Kind of somewhere in between. All right, you got the uh, the battle, the opening three p three uh, part suite. It's actually pretty cool. It's kind of proggy, but again, more of like kind of like um, I don't know. It's kind of hard rocking, but not too heavy. It's kind of proggy, but not too proggy. You kind of get where I'm going with this. It's like uh, decent stuff. Again, if you just think of like a very solid Hammond organ guitar-led band, all right, uh, with decent vocals, somewhat memorable tracks, but it's not exemplary, okay? It's like nothing on this album just stands out and says, man, that's top-notch. But it's a fun listen, right, if you like this sort of thing. Uh, King of Hearts, cool tune, got Accent, Lonely Man. I mean, I like it. I like the album. Uh, is it going to change your, your existence? Yeah, probably not. All right, for me... These the top two are actually really good albums in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna go with the the, the first album, Sacrifice from 1970. Again, they were signed to CBS Records. All right, their first three albums, so they were on a major label. So this is the one that kind of started grabbing all the attention back in the day. If you can get past the kind of like I said, over the top nature of the occult and satanic lyrics, there's actually a very good album here. All right. Um, you know, their, their probably most famous little epic at the time was uh, Come to the Sabbath, all right, which, again, has got all this kind of satanic chanting and things like that, but musically it's a pretty cool tune. Uh, Conjuration, Seduction are really good. The title track is really good. Attack of the Demon, good hard rock song with lots of Hammond organ, biting guitar riffs, all right. Uh, you got flute all over the place on here. So it's, you know, In Ancient Days is really good too. Way to Power, it's a really good album top to bottom. You know, again, just got to think of, I'm trying to think what that, the, you remember Comus, another band from uh, back around that time who were doing more of kind of like a folky version of this with all the occult imagery and what have you. So think of a little heavier version of that, but certainly not Black Sabbath heavy, okay? I mean, this sounds nothing like Sabbath, what they were doing. More on the occult imagery, less on the power chords and all that kind of stuff but you got Hammond organ flute and some tasty guitar licks in there I like that album good album <clears throat> all right number one for me is going to be their second album Black Widow from 1971 this is quite a good album here what I like about this album is this is more of so by this time their second album so not even barely a year later they decided to scrap all the occult and satanic stuff all right and just go for, be a regular hard rock band uh there's what about 10 tracks on here Good hard rock album, all right? Plenty of Hammond organ, tasty rock riffing, all right? And uh, let's see if I can show you a picture of the band in here. Yeah, there they are. Okay. Good stuff on here. Um, like I said, I think for me, this has a lot of memorable songs. I love the, the guitar riffing on here. Uh, the Journey is a kick-ass song, Legend of Creation. The Gypsy is awesome. Uh, Poser and Mary Clark, top-notch tunes. Good, good early 70s hard rock album. I dig it. So for me, it's my favorite, but I will say that I dig the debut 
a lot of sacrifice. So those are easily the top two. The rest, you know, if you get none, nothing else by this band, those uh, those first two, that's what I'd go for. I think you'll dig both of them. So coming in number one, we're going to go with uh, self-titled from 71. Number two, their debut, Sacrifice, from 1970. Number three, their third album, okay, from uh, 1972. Their fourth album, also from uh, that same time period, but not released till 97. And coming in at dead last from 2011, uh, Sleeping with Demons. All right, there you have it. Quick little episode on a kind of a cool little unknown band that uh, probably worth checking out for you if you've never heard them before. I, I kind of dig them. Like I said, we've, we've actually had some people who have asked for them. So uh, thankfully I had everything here. So uh, glad to bring it to you. So visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. What's coming up, you might be asked momentarily. Going to rank the albums of Trapeze. I've been looking forward to doing that one. Uh, also, I got another special. Uh, a lot of people seem to like the um, the comeback reunion show I did yesterday. I'm going to try and get to more of that sort of stuff. So, uh, what I've got, what I'm working on, probably won't deliver till tomorrow, is uh, or tomorrow or over the weekend, is I'm doing a uh, show that's actually was asked for quite a lot. Um, geez, back a year or so ago, and I kind of put it on the back burner. But I was going through my to do list and saying, hey, I got to get back to that show. A lot of you wanted to know what are some of my favorite the must-hear, must-have Mellotron albums. So albums, mostly prog albums, featuring, big time, the mighty keyboard, the Mellotron. More like a tape machine, right? But it's still seen as a keyboard. Uh, There's been a lot of classics over the years of bands that have featured that very cool symphonic instrument, okay? Bringing all those great orchestral sounds and brass sounds and what have you. Um, it's a beloved instrument to prog fans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together my list of some of the top albums that featured the Mellotron, amongst other instruments, okay, that are must-hears. So that should be kind of fun. So I got my list, put my list together, just kind of fixing it up. I also want to show the discs on this one as well. So that's coming up over the next couple of days, all right? So you got to see that. We got uh, Top 10 Songs with Jack Toledano. Going to be doing Iced Earth this weekend. Other stuff happening too, right? Too many to mention. I'm uh, going to rank the albums of the Rolling Stones. That's coming to uh, this weekend. So we'll see you guys then, all right? Oh, probably also another uh, Monster's Den, all right? You guys got to watch some Monster's Den shows because uh, it's nobody's watching them, all right? If, uh, if they're going to continue to dwindle in views, I'm going to stop doing them. I'm enjoying doing them, but, uh, you know, I got to stick with stuff that people want to watch here. So I know there's a few of you who seem to like the Monster's Den, and that's great, but uh, I've noticed the viewership on each one has gotten less and less and less, so... Like I said, not going to keep doing them if nobody's watching them. I know I, know I enjoy doing them, but uh, apparently we don't have enough uh, classic horror and monster film fans on here. Or maybe I'm just not doing the stuff you like, or I don't know. Who knows? But uh, anyway, so that's coming up this weekend. Right? All right, so we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.